This video explains how to rotate a plot in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data set. And as you can see, our data frame contains five rows and the two columns X and Y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to rotate a plot, we first need to create this plot, as you can see in line five of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom right of RStudio that a new line plot is appearing. However, this line plot is not rotated yet. So if you want to rotate this plot, we first need to install and load the grid graphics package, as you can see in lines seven and eight of the code. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line eight of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the grid graphics package, such as grid.echo and grid.grab. And in order to rotate our plot, we need to create a user-defined function, which is based on these two functions of the grid graphics package. So in this case, I'm calling my user-defined function fungrop. So after running lines 10 to 13 of the code, this function is appearing at the top right. And then in the next step, I'm applying my user-defined function and I'm storing the output of my function in a new data object that I'm calling fungrop out. So if you run line 15 of the code, you can see that a new data object is appearing at the top right, which is called fungrop out. And then in the next step, we have to create a new page, as you can see in line 17, using the grid.newPage function. So as you can see, after running this line of code, an empty plot is appearing at the bottom right. And then in the next step, I'm using the push viewport and the viewport functions to rotate our plot. And I'm rotating this plot with an angle of 25 degrees. So after running lines 18 to 20 of the code, we have specified all the settings that we need. And then in the next step in line 21 of the code, we can use the grid.draw function to draw our rotated plot. So after running line 21, you can see at the bottom right that we have created a rotated plot in our studio. So in this first example, I have explained how to rotate a base R plot. However, it's also possible to use the ggplot2 package for this task, and this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 23 of the code. So as a first step, we need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 23 and 24. I have installed this package as well, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 24 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can create a ggplot2 plot object by running lines 26 and 27. So after running these lines of code, a new plot object called ggp is appearing at the top right. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of our studio by running line 28 of the code. And now you can see that we have created the same line plot as in the previous example. However, this time based on the ggplot2 package. And you can also see that this line plot is not rotated yet. So if we want to rotate this ggplot2 plot, we once again need to use the create new page function first to create an empty plot at the bottom right. And then in the next step, I'm using the print function. Within the print function, I'm specifying our plot object that we have created before. And then I'm setting the VP argument within the print function to be equal to the viewport function and within this function, I'm specifying the same settings as in the previous example. So I want to rotate our plot with 25 degrees. So after running lines 31 to 34 of the code, our plot is drawn once again. However, this time we have rotated the plot with an angle of 25 degrees. It's also possible to overlay several ggplot2 plots whereby some of these plots are rotated. And this is what I want to show you in the remaining code of this tutorial, starting in line 36 of the code. 
So first we need to create another blot object which will be the background of our final graphic. And we can do that as you can see in lines 36 and 37 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new blot object called ggp background is appearing at the top right. And we can draw this blot to the bottom right by running line 38 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a scatter plot based on our data and this scatter plot is not rotated. Now in addition to that we can use the print function as we did before to overlay our plot and within the print function we have to specify exactly the same as in the previous lines of code in lines 31 to 34. So if we run lines 41 to 44 you can see that our plot is updated at the bottom right and we have overlaid our rotated plot on top of our background plot. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.